I'll be showing seven new features in Reading Progress, the free Reading Fluency app in Microsoft Teams for Education. These features were inspired by educators and top requests, so let's get started. The first new feature is the number one most requested one for Reading Progress, and that is returning the Reading Fluency data marked up back to the student. I'm not going to do a deep dive into reading progress. You can go into the upper right and click the link to get the full demo. Now I'm a teacher here and I've already made a reading progress assignment and I'm going to go into one of my assignments and return the data back to the student. So we'll click geography. Now here's the student who's turned in her work, Ashley Kozak. As the educator, I've already marked this passage up. Now I'm ready to return it back to the student. I've marked up the mispronunciations, the repetitions, omissions, etc. And you can see the correct words per minute and the accuracy rate. The new feature shows up right here and you can see this return full report to student and you can edit this. So the default is, and I like to call this the full enchilada, which gives them everything you see here on the screen back. It gives them the words per minute, the percentages, the colors, everything. But we know some teachers say, I just want to give them a simplified view. So if I go into edit right here, I can set what the student will see. So the full enchilada is right here, but I could also choose the simplified report. And you can see the correct words per minute and the accuracy percentage don't show in this simplified report. You can also set it for just this one student. So maybe there's a student who they're not going to really appreciate to see all the numbers and the details. You just want them to see the colors. You can say, just set it for this student. Or you can say, you know what, for my entire class, I want them all to get the simplified report. For example, maybe you're teaching younger students and all the details around the words per minute and the percentages might be too overwhelming you can just have it be simplified. I'm just gonna set this to full report and I'm gonna set this for all assignments in the future so I don't have to change it again and I'll click save. Now this is set, I'll give feedback. Now I'll click return. Let's switch over and see what the student sees on their side. I'm signed in as the student now and I got a notification that my assignment has been returned. There is the assignment returned. I'll go down and click view assignment. Here's the assignment with great job, Ashley. Now as a student, I'll click this and here's the new feature. This is the new student view and you can see this is all the information, the full enchilada as I call it. So here's my correct words per minute, the accuracy rate. Now if I click on a word like physical, it shows that, oh, it was a mispronunciation. I can listen to the word. So this will play the actual read aloud voice and how it's supposed to sound. So if I said physicle and I don't know quite how to say it, I'll choose listen to this word. Physical. If I choose jump to word, it'll jump the video and the audio so I can watch and listen to myself read that word. My school geography. And I'll pause it and I can go to any part. I can even click on here and jump to word. So now I can go and actually see myself with the mispronunciation or the other error and I can listen to how that word should sound properly. The second new feature is the ability to import reading passages from OneDrive or Teams. So I'm gonna go down here in assignments and choose create and click assignment. Go over here to attach and then choose reading progress. You'll see an updated button that says import word or PDF. And when I click this, you'll see two new options from OneDrive or Teams. You can still upload from your device, but if you have passages in either of these OneDrive or Teams locations, you can now pick from there. For example, if I choose Teams, here are all the different teams I have and maybe in my staff site, I have a bunch of shared passages. So I'll drill into documents and then general and here's all my repository that can be shared across all the educators in my grade. So maybe I'll drill into fourth grade reading passages and I'll choose this one and I can attach that. I'm gonna cancel and show OneDrive, but you get the sense of how you can have this shared set of passages across your teams. The other option for import is OneDrive. So if I click here, it pulls up my OneDrive. I'll choose geography in this case and choose attach. And now I've got my passage all ready to go. The third new feature lets educators set a timer for their reading passages. So over on the right, you're gonna see a new choice, time limit, and by default, it's no limit, but if I wanna set it to five minutes or three minutes, I'm gonna choose one minute in this case, just do a one minute read, and now I can just add that to my assignment. If you wanna see what it looks like on the student side when a time limit is set, right here you can choose student view, and now you can see the student view. And right here, it says one minute to read. So that lets the student know that this is a timed passage and then they can start. I'll exit out of student view. And then I can just make my assignment. The fourth new feature lets you edit a draft of an assignment you've made in reading progress. So I'll go down in the lower part here and choose create and then assignment. We'll give it a quick title. 
enter the instructions, and then we'll go and click attach and choose reading progress. We'll upload a Word document quickly, and then we'll just set some information over here, genre, nonfiction, number of attempts, three, and we'll leave it at default and we'll click next. Now in the past, once I added this reading passage, I couldn't edit it. So let's say I discovered, wait a sec, I wanna change the number of attempts. I used to have to discard this and start over. Now, if I go to the three dot menu here, I can choose open in teams and it opens up my reading passage again and I'll change my number of attempts to one, click next, and now it's changed. The fifth new feature allows students to swap out their video camera when recording. So I'm gonna open up an assignment here for reading progress and I'm the student. Hey, here I am. Now you're gonna see this swap camera button. I click this. There's another camera I might have. Click it again. There's my laptop camera. So we'll go back to the beginning, click one more time. Now I'm ready to record. The sixth new feature is reading progress reports in Insights Premium. While class insights are something that gives you a class level view, Insights Premium gives you an entire organizational view across a set of schools, in a district, even a ministry of education. Insights Premium is a new paid offering. There is a link on the screen and also in the description to drill in to get more details on Insights Premium. But to start, I'm gonna add this app Insights to my app bar on the left. So click the three dot menu and there's Insights. You can also search for it if you don't find it. Now right here, you can see just your classes for Insights. And this is what any teacher can see where they have all their classes. You can see things like digital engagement, and you have assignments and you have reading progress. What I'm gonna do, and I have Insights Premium here, in the upper right, I'll drop down classes and I will choose organizations. Now in this case here in my demo, I have the Ministry of Education, which has 1900 students, and maybe there's a higher ed university, that's another example, 50,000 students. I'm gonna drill into my Ministry of Education here. And you can see I have things like engagement, assignments, but I also have reading progress over on the right, and I'm gonna drill into reading progress. These are the new reports in Insights Premium. I can see accuracy and I can see correct words per minute. If I hover here, I can get all the details across the entire set of students. In the upper right, you'll see 1900 students. You can see how many assignments for reading progress are getting sent out. They're average. I could also drill into high school versus primary schools and we'll show that. And down here, the percentage of students who are using reading progress. Let's say you're doing a broad school rollout and you wanna get a sense of who's using it this can easily tell you. In this case, I'm gonna drop down all and I can choose primary schools or high schools. I'm gonna choose primary schools. The data redraws and I still have the students using reading progress, the average accuracy rate, and even assignments per student here. I can drop down different grade levels and filter like that. I can filter by genre. If I've added reading levels, and in this case I've added Lexile levels, but those are optional, I can filter there, and I can also filter by number of days. So I can look in the last week or the last 28 days. I also now have my average reading accuracy for the different schools. Little Valley Elementary, Mountain Oak, and Riverside Middle School. And again, I can scroll down and compare. So I wanna see the different primary schools, all of them compared to the broader Ministry of Education in this case, which is the bigger organization. You can also see when I filter on primary schools, it's only a thousand students now. Next, let's drill into a specific school. I'm gonna drop this down and we'll go to Little Valley Elementary School. The data redraws again, and now I can see across all the different grades, I can see the reading accuracy, mispronunciations, omissions, insertions. Again, I can hover over any of these and get a little tool tip that has more data. I can have correct words per minute. You can see 85% in this case. Scrolling down to the number of assignments and percentage of students who are using reading progress in the Little Valley Elementary School versus all of the primary schools in my district. Let's drill in one more time. Maybe I wanna drill into a specific grade level, like fourth grade. Now again, I can compare, but I can go down here and see the accuracy rate, the correct words per minute, and even the challenging words. So I can hover here and see that, oh, in fourth grade across my school district, 65 of the words that were mispronounced were the word enhance. And so this really lets you get a sense of drilling up and down and around I can even drill into the fourth grade and see different classes in fourth grade. I can see assignments, but this should give you a sense of how Insights Premium works across a broad spectrum of data, all the way from a district into a grade and a class. The seventh new feature is keyboard improvements to the speed grader to give teachers time back. So I'll click geography here and I'll open up a student. 
Keyboard shortcuts can help speed up the entire review process. So I'm gonna click on the word the and it opens the menu. If I use the down arrow, you'll see the focus goes down and I can go back up. I go all the way up to the and now the square has the focus. If I hit the right arrow, it goes to the next word. So I'll hit the right arrow a couple times and you'll see it navigating like this. Hit the left arrow, I can go back the other way. I can also go to the beginning or the end. If I hit end, you'll see the focus is down at water, the last word. If I hit home, focus is back up here. Now the best one in my opinion is the ability to hit the space bar and be able to hear that word. So if I wanna navigate, let's say I use a couple arrows and I just wanna hear her say landforms can be mountains and valleys, I'll hit the space bar right on this word. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. And I hit the space bar again and it'll pause it. So I can go to any part right like this and hit the space bar. We'll use to decide where they And hit the space bar to stop. The last keyboard shortcut is also really useful. This allows you to jump between different errors with a single keyboard shortcut. So if I start in the beginning on the, and I wanna to jump to this bicycle, I just do control period, Scroll down and it jumps feet. me. I'll hit the space bar to pause it. Now if I wanna to jump to the next one where she does the repetition, I can do control period again. The cool features it is important. And if I wanna go backwards, I just do control comma. So control comma and control period go backwards and forwards. They're just like the Outlook shortcut in next previous for messages, which is also control period and control comma. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you wanna keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.